Now that I hopefully stressed why managing myopia is so important, let's get into the multiple strategies that are available for your child. In this video, I'll go into explaining the principle behind myopia management and providing an overview on the options. Hey there, my name is Dr. Natalie Chai. This channel brings you the latest science-based education and treatments in dry eye disease, myopia management, and specialty contact lenses to help you understand why it should matter to you for optimal eye health, function, comfort, and even beauty. We are in exciting times when it comes to a lot of things in eye care, and one of them is myopia management. And a lot has changed only for the better. You may be wondering, how are we able to manage the growth of a child's eyeball as they grow? To answer that question, we must first look into the physiological process and theory of what causes an eyeball to grow longer, especially once the process starts. And so this brings us into number one, the basics. The theory is highly dependent on how light enters the eye and where it focuses as it reaches the back of the eye, which is the retina. As with anything, we have to understand how light behaves in a normal eyeball. I'm sure you may at some point seen these diagrams before and a basic understanding is absolutely necessary in myopia management and how it works. Emetropia. So these are individuals requiring no prescription. As light comes in at a distance off an object and the rays focus perfectly on the back of the retina. In this scenario, the accessory eye muscles that change the shape of the lens of the eye are not needed. Secondly, hyperopia or farsightedness. As light comes in at a distance from an object, the rays will focus behind the retina causing a blurry image. Typically, this is because the patient's eyeball is shorter. The accessory eye muscles then have to work to reshape the shape of the crystal lens so that the light focus is onto the back of the retina for a clear image. This process is called accommodation. And lastly, myopia, as we know as nearsightedness. As light comes in at a distance off an object, the rays will focus in front of the retina causing a blurry image. So uh, contrary, this is because the eyeball is too long. Unfortunately, accommodation does not work in this scenario. And so the distant image is always perceived as blurry unless they wear glasses or contact lenses. These prosthetics work to move the focus light back onto the retina to mimic the emetropic or perfect eyeball. Now this would appear to solve all our problems, right? Wrong. So glasses and contacts only bring the light perfectly to the center part of the eye. What we tend to forget is that our eyeball is three-dimensional and plus it is not a perfectly round sphere. It is more oval really and it's actually longer horizontally than it is vertical. Now this brings us to an all-important theory where all of the optical options for myopia management is based off of. Number two, the peripheral defocus theory. The principle of this theory is in the name itself, where there is essentially defocus of the light rays in the periphery of the retina. In the case of the myopic eye, when light is focused clearly on the elongated central retina, by default, the periphery rays are still being focused behind the Eye. This is what we call peripheral hyperopic defocus. So this is what's functionally happening in the myopic eye peripherally. This is a precise reason why a child with myopia tends to worsen and worsen and worsen each year. If we were to connect the points of where all the light lands, we actually produce what we call a retinal image shell that's focused behind the retina. In short, the theory suggests that the eye can detect the sign and amount of defocus and respond accordingly. Our body again in general strives for balance and in order for the peripheral light rays that are landing behind the eye to come into focus the eye actually responds by growing outwards towards the retinal image shell that is laying behind the retina unfortunately we can't isolate where the eye grows when one part grows everything grows including the central retina and this is what causes the higher myopic prescription the eye enters into a constant biochemical feedback loop where the eye gets longer and longer, therefore more nearsighted. The idea with myopia management is that we want to do the complete opposite. So we are trying to bend and induce the image shell so that the peripheral light rays land in front of the retina peripherally while maintaining focus centrally still. In essence, we want to move from 
the peripheral hyperopic defocus to the peripheral myopic defocus. Having the image shell in front of the retina now negates the biochemical feedback loop as a signal for the eye to grow longer. This theory has been studied extensively and is also supported by animal studies over the years. Now besides this theory, there are other theories as well. This includes the accommodative lag theory. So this is similar to the peripheral defocus theory in that when a child is unable to focus effectively, when doing near work specifically, it causes the hyperopic retinal blur. And this blur causes the eye to grow longer. Another theory that has been teased as well is called the mechanical tension theory. The thought here is that there is tension created by structures such as the crystalline lens and the ciliary body, which restricts the growth of the eyeball in other directions other than growing horizontally or axially. Okay, so now we're ready to get into the part that you're most interested in. Number three, overview of myopia management options. I'll provide a summary of what is available and relevant in the market space today on the multiple strategies considered in myopia management. So in no particular order, let's take a look together. Orthokeratology or ortho-K. There are actually many terms for this, and this includes you know, corneal reshaping therapy or corneal refractive therapy, CRT for short. Essentially, this is a hard contact lens using a lens design called reverse geometry. So the magic happens at night when the child is sleeping. The ortho-K lens gently remolds and reshapes the corneal epithelial tissues. Because the overall curvature of the cornea has changed, when the child removes the lenses in the morning, the light entering the eye is now bent differently. Ortho-K uses the peripheral defocus theory to change the image shell from being hyperopic to myopic. I have to constantly remind the parents that the purpose of Ortho-K is to slow down the progression of axial length growth and in turn the strength of their child's prescription. The bonus is the child is virtually free from glasses or contact lens wear during the full course of the day. You can kind of think of the Ortho-K lens like a retainer for your eyeballs though. To retain the shape and good vision, these lenses must be worn nightly. Now, depending on the study you read, the percentage efficacy for myopia management with ortho-K is anywhere between 50% all the way up to 90%. Now, I've been using these lenses for my patients the longest, and, it's, and it is actually a very attractive option for the child and parents alike. Now, did I mention that this is also a fantastic option for adults looking for an alternative to refractive corrective surgery? Ortho-K wear in the context for adults is to provide the same luxury of being glasses and contact lens free during the day. However, it's not so much for myopia management. Ortho-K is reversible as well. So if one day you wake up and you decide you absolutely love wearing your glasses or contact lenses again, said almost no one ever, all you need to do is stop wearing them at night and allow for the cornea to bounce back to its original shape. Cooper Vision MySight One Day Soft Contact Lenses. MySight contacts look like normal soft lenses and like the conventional daily disposable, the child opens a fresh pair to wear each day and is then thrown away at nighttime. Unlike the conventional daily soft contact lens, the value of the MySight contact is found in the technology and design incorporated into the lens. The technology used in the lens is called active control technology, where there are alternating concentric circle zones of vision correction. So these zones provide the clear vision for the child. And then alternating, there are treatment zones. So these are to induce that myopic defocus in the peripheral retina. Again, this design uses the peripheral defocus theory to achieve the reduction in myopia progression. In their well-designed study, which is still going on, it has consistently demonstrated to slow myopia progression in children by 59%. This is also a very attractive option for children who lead a very active lifestyle. Low-dose atropine prescription eye drops. Atropine is a prescription eye drop used extensively in Asia where almost 80% of the children are myopic today. Day. Its use is very popular in those regions where the drop is used by instilling it into the child's eyes every night, preferably before bedtime. Numerous studies have demonstrated its efficacy to be one of the highest from 50% up to 80%. However, in North America, its adoption by clinicians has been slower due to a few challenges and question marks around how it actually works. We still don't know what the mechanism is. The initial thought was that it used to use
use the theory of mechanical tension by knocking out the focusing system. However, further studies recently have shown that it may have its effect more in the retina. The second question is the concentration that is most effective. In the past, 1%, 0.05%, 0.025, and 0.01% were all options. And the other side of it too is the side effects for the child. These are side effects similar to what you would experience if you've ever been dilated by your eye doctor. We also don't know the long-term effects of these drops in the next you know, 10, 20 years for the child. Now, I have recently started to use this method for younger children. This is a great option for those who are not old enough or are not ready to start any type of contact lens or like, Ortho K or my site. The Hoya MyoSmart Spectacle Lens. Now this is super exciting for me because this was just released July of 2020 in Canada. Again, it uses the peripheral defocus theory and uses the concept of simultaneous defocus. Their technology is known as the Defocus Incorporated Multiple Segments or DIMS technology. This was developed at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University and won an international award for its design. It looks like a single vision lens but again is packed with the high technology that achieves the desired results in myopia management. It has been shown to slow the refractive change in children by 59% and also slow the axial eye growth of the eyeball by 60%. Now our office just finished the required certification as a whole to be able to confidently dispense these lenses as another exciting tool and option for our children. Now I've been waiting a long time for a spectacle lens design that parallels the effectiveness to that of an ortho K lens or the MySight lens, as this is also nicely positioned for the younger patient who may not be ready for a contact lens option or who is a little bit iffy on starting atropine therapy. Now I'm excited to see personal results with my patient shortly here in the future. Combination. With all these available options, it made sense to me to consider combining two therapy options together if necessary. I have had a handful of patients where unfortunately their prescription was already quite high and using one strategy would only partially correct for their vision. There have been multiple studies that have shown still the effectiveness of partial correction and slowing down myopia progression. There are few papers that study the potential additive effect of using two strategies simultaneously. Now, I I've personally used a combination of Ortho-K as the primary option and also MySight to correct for the residual or leftover prescription. And I can share with you that it has been very effective. To me, knowing that there is no harm done with using any one of these options in solitary, then there is no harm done with using two or a combination of these together. My philosophy as always is just to do something. Again, I'll be going into each one in more detail in future YouTube videos and hopefully I'll communicate the pros and the cons of each one and show you how we together choose an option for the child. It is almost a, a bit of an art form where we have to consider the entire profile of the child and also the profile of the parents. Now, once a strategy is agreed upon, I have a strict follow-up schedule to monitor the effectiveness. Don't forget, we're in it for the long haul and that the option may change through the years as the child grows and also when life circumstances changes. So for example, typically most children who start young or we would maybe start with atropine or uh, glasses typically gravitate towards a contact lens option going into their teenage years. Just like the journey of dry eye disease management, myopia management is very fluid and we do need to be very flexible with our plan. I hope this gives an informative overview to what is out there for you and your myopic child and I also hope you learn something and find it as interesting as I do. That's it for me today. If you enjoy learning about myopia management, please click the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss my new video every Thursday. Take care of your eyes and I'll see you next time.